Hey everybody, welcome to the Sky Lounge and this is Cruise Peru's episode number one, two, three, 123 boys and girls, that's right. It's been a while, it's been a while since I've uh, done the Cruise Peru's here. Been chilling with the fucking sky highs. Just staying at home, smoking the weed, recording those videos, talking about sports ball, the good times, boys and girls. As you can notice, my lips are uh, crack attic white today. That's the contouring color brought to you by Maybelline. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. But, boys and girls, it's been a long time coming. And I got to talk about a topic that's been a long time coming. Mitch Marner of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Forward, Mitch Marner, has finally agreed to a contract extension. Yes, boys and girls, the restrictive free agent formerly known as Mitch Marner is getting extended for six years in a $65 million contract, an annual average value of roughly $10.9 million. Wow. Wow. Um, wow. I gotta tell you, Toronto, um, I think you have two, three years. I, I really think you got two, three years to get this shit together, to figure something out. Um, obviously, getting this Marner deal was huge. Um, you can you can already see it from the internet, man. You can already see the fucking trolls out there already. Overpaid! Oh, this is gonna be Nylander all over again! Like, that, bro, like, this, is, this is shit they had to do. At this point with the Toronto Maple Leafs, like, if you didn't pay Marner that money, you would have been fucked. Period. Um, I'm about to put this turn signal here. But the reality of the Toronto Maple Leafs is, yeah, you had to do this deal. You had to get this shit done. And unfortunately, that means a lot of depth, and a lot of pieces in your squad just out the window. But thankfully for you guys, at least, uh, Toronto fans, um... A, you had the Marlies, you know, win the Calder Cup two seasons ago, so you probably still have guys from that squad, I would imagine. I'm not 100% sure. And B, and listen, if the Maple Leafs fuck up, at least you got the Raptors, right? Yeah. Yeah, man, you still got the fucking Raptors, who finally won one. So there you go, Toronto Maple Leafs fans. That's the positives. Now, you have four players in total, making about $40 million in your squad. Wow. <laughs> Holy fuck. That's insanity. And listen, um, I I will throw another caveat out there, uh, just like I do with the Dallas Cowboys. I don't hate the Toronto Maple Leafs. I don't. I think they're a fantastic group of uh, away fans that I get to see every now and then at the T-Mobile Arena, boys and girls. I always say this. Uh, Toronto fans... You know, whether you call them trolls or not, they are, in my eyes, um, the best away fans. Um, I've, I've never seen a group of fans away from home represent their team so well. And yeah, there you might have a few knuckleheads here and there, but I generally feel that whenever I see Toronto fans, I'm like, cool, man, y'all cool. Like, y'all cool with me. I don't, I don't got any fucking gripe with you. Like, and the whole... Uh, Thing with the Golden Knights for the first season was, you know, you had the Toronto Maple Leafs, the oldest franchise in NHL history, and the Vegas Golden Knights, the newest franchise in NHL history, but obviously with Seattle coming in in a few years, that's not going to be the case anymore, so that was a nice little thing that we had uh, for quite some time, and personally, I would love it if the Stanley Cup final was the Toronto Maple Leafs and Vegas Golden Knights, because I wouldn't really hold a lot of animosity towards Toronto. I, I don't think I would. Um, I just kind of, I, I'd probably be at that point of like, okay, cool, man. Like, y'all, y'all against this, but I don't really hate y'all. It's kind of like the Capitals. Well, not really like the Capitals. I mean, I probably like one, two personnel from the Capitals when they beat us. Barry Trotz and Alexander Ovechkin, like those two are the only guys I actually like. And uh, within reason, right? Within reason, because I can't stand Kuznetsov. 
I, I, I can't stand it. I, I can't stand him getting Kuznetsa. Um, the guy shot some dagger goals against the Vegas Golden Knights in the Stanley Cup Final. He shot some dagger goals against the Pittsburgh Penguins, too, which I have a lot of respect for. I do. I love Sid. I love Sid the Kid. Uh, but I do love Obi. I do love Obi. And that's just, you know, me as a hockey fan. But Kuznetsov's a cut. <laughs> I, I think Kuznetsov's a fucking cut. And this news that came out today made me hate him doubly so. Not really hate him. Because to a certain extent, I don't respect him. I don't. Um, ironically said, because yeah, I, I smoke weed all the time. I drink like a fucking maniac whenever I get an opportunity. Um, however, with the hardcore drugs, I always say no. Um, I think it's just a bad idea all on its own. And the repercussions of, uh, you know, narcotics like that, like cocaine, it's crazy. Like the detriment that it has to your body is insane. And people just still ignore that shit. And what's crazy to me is while the w, uh, double IHF handed Kuznetsov a four-year ban for testing positive for co testing positive for cocaine usage. If Gany Kuznetsov will probably not will probably be suspended ex not exceeding three games in the NHL. Let me repeat that again. If Gany Kuznetsov will be suspended by the NHL, but it will not exceed more than three games. Concussion's not a problem. Minor fucking PEDs, that's not going to affect the thing. That's a problem. We're going to ban you for 20 games. But cocaine isn't a fucking problem? Really? Really, NHL? Wow. Just wow. Where's your, where's your fucking priorities at? Those PEDs, and specifically I'm bringing up the Nate Schmidt example because this is just unbelievably ridiculous. A performance enhancement drug that has no value in performance enhancing to, micro, to, to, to the extent where the guy who took it accidentally Notice that it was microscopic traces of it. And yet you ban him for that shit. Fucking 20 games, okay? But a guy who snorts up cocaine, who fucking comes to Las Vegas, snorts out the fucking table in a Las Vegas nightclub, this motherfucker only gets banned for less than three games in the NHL, in the National Hockey League? Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. That is the most ridiculous shit I've ever heard in my life. Who oh, Snorty McGee can only play all the fucking games with minor PD? That's a fucking long-term suspension. Like, I love hockey, but the NHL is fucking retarded. Like, sorry. I'm, I'm not sorry. Why the fuck would I be sorry about that statement? The fuck? It's the most asinine bullshit I've ever fucking heard in my life. And all you Capitals fans and all you fucking hip new cool kids are saying, like, oh, cocaine's not bad. We should have recreational cocaine. All right, dipshit. Let's just say we have recreational cocaine, motherfucker. Do you understand the fucking repercussions of how bad cocaine actually is to your fucking body? Do you understand how harmful it is to your nervous system and your fucking central nervous system and your fucking brain cells, you dumb fuck? Holy shit. I know I just, like, fucking sped through my, you know, talking. And it didn't, you know, make a whole lot of sense. But I'm telling you, physiologically and biologically, you know, physiologically, uh, what cocaine does to your body uh, it should be immensely alarming if you read those fucking medical books okay just just saying kids all right do your do some due diligence in the research whenever someone someone just some dipshit just says oh recreational cocaine is great like what cocaine in extreme circumstances are maybe used for medicinal purposes right extreme circumstances not for fucking partying on the weekend with a whore named Deborah, you dumb fucks. Holy fucking shit, dude. It just fucking irritates the fuck out of me. Three fucking games for cocaine and 20 fucking games for a PED that's not even fucking traceable. Microscopic fucking levels of bullshit. It's unreal. 
And I got, I just got to say, man, the fucking NHL can be an absolute joke. Absolute fucking joke, right? The on, the on the ice product is beautiful. I mean, I'm going to go see it tomorrow, you know, Vegas Golden Knights hosting the Arizona Coyotes in our preseason exhibition game. But despite all of that, there's a lot of stupidity in the NHL. Um, You know, fans are no exception. Fans are no exception. The whole argument for Kuznetsov, that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Um, And this whole Marner thing, I... Boy, oh boy. It was, it was a necessity, but yeah, it, it's going to be one of those things like if you don't win something of significance in the next two, three years, really three, four years, but I always like give that contract maybe two years, like I take out those last two years because you could get traded. That That's the reality of, you know, the sports business now. And yeah, I really do think the Maple Leafs have a two, four year window now to win something, was whether that be the President's Trophy, whether that be the divisional, you know, lead, whatever the case may be, you guys need to win something, um, and that's based on the talent on ice, I mean, you got Tavares, you got Nylander, who, yeah, uh, people will argue overrated, but that kid's a stud when he's on, uh, you got Mitch Marner, who you just signed, finally, and he is know, the one B of your team. I mean, he is the second face of your franchise. And then that man who you have paid, who you have to realize, like, this guy is going to be your leader is Austin Matthews. I love Austin Matthews, dude. I'm, I'm a fucking Vegas fan, but I love Austin Matthews. USA born hockey kid. I mean, I don't like Arizona, but that like the fact that Austin Matthews is born in Arizona, maybe the only redeemable factor about Arizona truly is but yeah the fans are already complaining the fans are complaining like the dipshits who defend Kuznetsov in the co-cabin it's the same goddamn idiots who are saying oh, Marner's not worth all that money what Marner's not worth 11 million what what are you talking about dude look any standard team would fucking fork over 10 million easy for Marner oh my fucking god listen I'm no hockey expert I'm no analytics expert, but what the eye test tells me, and from what I've seen from Mitch Marner, holy shit, pay the kid his money. He's still going to have like eight plus years under his belt. It's going to be incredible to watch this kid develop. Have we not, have we forgotten that like these young guys in the Toronto Maple Leafs, except John Tavares, are young cats, mid twenties, early twenties. Holy fuck. Mitch Marner's not... Mitch Marner is worth 10 plus or more on any average team. And I'll say this, as a Vegas fan, any team would be lucky to have this kid on the first line, period. I would love, I would love Mitch Marner partnering next to Pat Chiretti and Mark Stone. Who the fuck would play center? Probably Mitch Marner, in my eyes. But, hey man, that's just me. And I know a lot of you dumbass fans just uh, bitching about some sh- good shit that's happening. And the Maple Leafs, like, suck dick for years. Like, don't you fuckers realize, like, you guys have it good right now? Like, the only thing you have to complain about, oh, we, get, we got kicked out of the playoffs. Yeah, motherfucker, through your own sheer incompetence. Like, what the fuck are you complaining about? Stop it. Stop it, bro. What the fuck? Like, spoiled-ass fans, dude. I, I don't know what else to say to you, spoiled-ass fans, man. Y'all motherfuckers make me sick. It's like whenever I talk to Patriots fans, I go, we, we didn't win this game by like 40 points. Dickhead. You won six Super Bowls in 20 fucking years. Shut your fucking ass up. Warriors fans. Oh, I can't believe we didn't three-peat. Bitch ass. In a five-year span, you won three NBA titles, two back-to-back, with arguably one of the most talented generational players like what the fuck what are you complaining about and it's sad because these Warriors fans a lot a lot of these fucking basic casual ass Warriors fans what you'll see is ah Stephen Clay no appreciation for the smaller guys 
You know, the 2015 MVP, Iguodala, the man himself. You know, guys like Andrew Bogut, who played a massive role in that 2015. You know, maybe minutes, uh, stats might not show on paper, but hey, sometimes the team will benefit the star players because that's how shit goes sometimes, man. Most times that's how shit goes. The point tally will be more predicated on the all-stars who's going to have more touches on the ball. But again, you know, basketball is a team effort. And this is the thing that people always tend to forget. And it's all these young, dumb fucking idiots. Oh, yeah! Russell Westbrook does a DJ What? What are you talking about, dude? James Harden, he's the GOAT. He doesn't need anybody else on the back of the with four points. You realize that Eric Gordon is like the most fucking reliable player in the playoffs. And when James Harden is choking, right? Like, what the fuck are we talking about here, folks? And to that same extent, a role player who has been, in my eyes, distinguished as an invaluable part of the Warriors program uh, for the last five, six years has been Sean Livingston. And he has announced his retirement from the NBA. And my God, um, Sean Livingston. Can we get a fucking kudos for that man? A man who, by all means, could have gone to another team, could have gotten more minutes in any other team, you know, if he wished it, but he kept with the program. He, he stuck with the Warriors and thought, and yeah, may, maybe people say, you know, dick riding on a championship wagon, but those, those, that first one, man, I don't know. You could really argue like, that was a complete team effort. And of course, the latter years of Kevin Durant, that could be argued that Kevin Durant was a cheat code and the Warriors on a set team, like they were they were already going to take care of business. They really were. And so, best of luck to Sean Livingston uh, in whatever future endeavors uh, he has planned next. Just a, just a solid all-around basketball player that I don't think gets a lot of doesn't get a lot of praise. Doesn't get a whole lot of praise because of the basicness of general NBA fans. And, you know, I, I only wish him the best. I do. I do. And this is what happens, boys and girls, when you live in ignorance. You just think, oh, I'm the best. Like, nothing, nothing bad is going to happen to me. Like, no, dipshit. Like, no. You understand the totality of the situation. Perspective and context, kids. Perspective and context. It's like those fucking moronic Liverpool fans just goddamn screaming at the top of their lungs. We're going to be, we're going to win the league. We're going to win the league this season. It's our year. It's our year. Yes, Liverpool beat Newcastle today with the Premier League coming back 3-1 to one in Anfield. Not really all that surprised. But the surprising part was seven minutes into the match, Newcastle opened up the scoring 1-0. What proceeded was Mane scoring twice in the first half and Salah solidifying himself as his top solid fucking striker getting the fucking goal in and yeah Liverpool with I believe 14 straight wins in the Premier League uh, continuing from last season and it's a great tally it's a great statistic it's it's, fa- it's fantastic good on you good on you guys but can you actually win this year <laughs> Liverpool fans I'm I'm sick to death of hearing, this is our year, this is our year. You can flaunt the Champions League all you want. Fantastic, good on you guys, kudos. Because as an Arsenal fan, I don't know what the fuck that's like. I don't know what fucking Champions League is like, okay? Let me get that out of the way for you fucking dipshit motherfuckers who have to really just go back to that argument. If that's your only fucking argument, I I really feel sorry for you. Because that Liverpool team, this Liverpool team that I watched this morning is... By far a much weaker team than last season when you consider the fact that Adrian is still going to be a goalkeeper for at least another month or so, maybe. And to me, it's very simple. Allison's healthy, you guys are fine. Van Gieck is healthy, you guys are going to be fine. But can you capitalize? Can you consistently string these results to ultimately lift that Premier League trophy? In my eyes, no. <laughs> I, I just don't think it is. Um, you have the season, beginning season hype. You had the you know, season closer last few matches last season where Liverpool was just going on the string of wins. But ultimately, within the Premier League, if it doesn't, 
you know, amount to winning a fucking trophy doesn't fucking matter. Like, I always have to hear this shit. Like, oh, this is the greatest Premier League squad of all time. Liverpool's the greatest. Like, it don't mean a thing without a ring, bitch. Like, the fuck? Like, y'all motherfuckers need to shut the fuck up. That's what the fuck you need to do. And again, this is coming from an Arsenal fan who realizes that his team has gotten his gotten their fucking teats kicked in years after years after years, but put some fucking perspective, motherfuckers. You guys have spent how much money and you still haven't won a fucking Premier League in 20-some-odd years? Yeah, have fun with that shit. Holy fuck. So it's off to the races, the Premier League races, where we're going to be watching more Premier League matches, boys and girls, on this beautiful Saturday morning. So, boys and girls, follow me at the Sky Lounge. And all the links in the description below, like, comment, subscribe for more daily content. Now fuck off.